Hey everybody, my name is Asia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a series audit. So I thought this would be really fun because I have a video hopefully coming up of me finishing off some series so I thought we could go through together and talk about all the series that I'm in the middle of or the ones that I've caught up on, all of them. So I originally got this idea from Melanor Reads. I saw her do this video but obviously the idea of five star audits had been going around for a while as well but I saw her do a series audit and I was like yeah that's a video I should definitely do. Let me know if you want to see a five star audit from me as well. I've been trying to figure out the logistics of how to set that one up but if you guys want to see it then I can definitely figure it out for you. Now there's a lot of series for us to go over today so we just got to start and get through them. So here's my spreadsheet. I actually made the spreadsheet myself and I will have the video linked down below where I talk about this or up in the cards where I go over my spreadsheet. This one's actually part of my premium spreadsheet which you can get free by being a member of my Patreon or you could buy for $5 on my Etsy. So this is the 2024 series tracker page on that spreadsheet, which is the premium spreadsheet. So we are gonna go over my series. I did not include every single series on here. Some series I finished way in the past, like Divergent or stuff like that. I didn't include those series on here. I mostly cut. I mostly included series that are still ongoing or that I have not finished personally. So if we scroll over to the side really quickly, we can see the number of series that I have on this list is 98 and 88 of those are currently in progress. Zero of them are finished, but four of them I'm completely caught up on. 19 of them are almost done, which means I only have one book left. And then six of them I've DNF'd, but I haven't DNF'd them enough where I take them off the spreadsheet. I wanted to ask y'all's opinion on whether I should finish these series or not. So we're just going to start off at the top. So the ones that are this beige color are basically ones where I only have one book left in the series. So they're almost done. And then these mauvey purple ones are kind of series that I'm caught up on. And then the brown ones are series that I've DNF'd. And then they turn completely green like this color on the side for these bars. They turn green when I have completed them. But I don't have any of those on this because if I completed them before 2024, I just didn't include them. So this is like a 2024 ongoing thing. First up is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is a historical kind of YA thriller series that I actually really enjoy. I only have one book left in the series, but this one is a really fun one. I definitely plan on finishing it, and you can see I love seeing the progress on the side and seeing that I'm almost done. Then I have the Arc of the Sci series by Neil Shusterman. This one is one that I really enjoy. It was originally a trilogy, but there's now a novella as well, or like a series of novellas, like a short story collection. So I'm not sure if I will complete that, but that's why it says 3.5 because it has three books and then the novella so I've read two of the three in the original trilogy so yeah I definitely really like this one it's dystopian and it's just a really really fun time it is YA as well so I do have some YA series on here from the past but I also have like you by Karen Kepnes which I'm sure we all know you because of the show but this is a thriller series that takes place in second person it is so fun i've only read the first book in it but i think i'm going to continue on in the series so that's why i put it on the spreadsheet i recently bought the second book so i'm excited to continue on then i have the kiss quotient by helen huang this is a romance series i've only read the first one but i really like this one because it had a neurodivergent main character and there's just a lot of different representation throughout this series that i've heard so i definitely want to continue on with it and it is really really like just like a fun kind of rom-com time then i have Saga by Brian K. Vaughn. This one is a sci-fi graphic novel series. I'm sure you all know it. Um, I have read 10 of the 11 volumes that are currently out so I only have one left to go. It's basically about two warring species and one from each of them kind of come together and fall in love and have a baby which is illegal. So we follow the child of them basically telling her parents story in her story. It's really really good. Then I have A Court of Thrones and Roses by Sarah J Maas. This is a fantasy romance series. Series. I have completely caught up on this series so I actually need to change this because the last one that I read was number four. So I completely caught up on this series but I know that there's supposed to be another one coming out so that's why it's still on the list. I'm really excited for this one. We all know A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's such a good series. Then I have Royally by Emma Chase. This is actually one of the first romances I ever read and I've actually reread it and I really liked it as well. It is a royalty romance 
series and I read the first one but there's four books in the series so I would definitely like to continue on in the series. Next up is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is a YA thriller mystery series that takes place at a academy and it is like a really fun time. I haven't heard the best things about the rest of the series but I still want to continue on. Then I have the Tea Dragon series by Kay O'Neill. This is a graphic novel series. I've only read the first one but it was so cute and wholesome and I've heard such good things about the rest of the series. I definitely want to continue on. Then next up is my first DNF series and that is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha and Young. I really loved the first one but the second one just didn't hit for me so I just don't know if I should continue on or not but let me know if you finished it. Let me know if I should continue. Then I have Check Please and this one is a graphic novel romance series that I love. I'm almost finished with it. It actually needs to be beige out. Normally they automatically kind of change color in this if you can see they just change color. But for the ones that only have one book left, I do those manually myself. But I'm almost finished with this one and I really, really love this one. It is such like a cute little graphic novel series. If you like Heartstopper but want something more adult, I would definitely recommend this one. Then next up I have Thorn Chapel by Sierra Simone. This was another one of the first romances that I read, which is really crazy because this is a crazy romance. Crazy, crazy, okay? It's a crazy romance, but I really, really love this one a lot. I think it was really, really fun, and I definitely would try continuing on in the series, but I could definitely see myself DNFing it further along in the future. Then I have The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. We all know The Raven Cycle. It's a booktube classic, and it is a fantasy, kind of like paranormal series, and so I definitely want to continue on in this. I actually own the whole series because back in the day, I used to buy the entire series before I even read the first book, so I have the whole series, so I definitely want to continue on. Then I have Serpent and Dub by Shelby Mahurin. I know a lot of people don't like this series, but I really enjoyed the first book when I read it, but I also read it a couple years ago when it first came out, so I don't know if I would love it as much now. Sorry if you hear any sirens. I've literally keep hearing sirens and like I keep having to stop filming I don't know what's going on because it's been going on for hours of just sirens all the time but anyways back to Serpent and Dove a lot of people didn't like this book I really liked it so I want to continue on in the series and I think I own the second book as well then these which is don't burn actually needs to be highlighted as well this is good that we're going through this because I'm seeing some that I forgot to highlight but this is a little duology. It is a little YA witch duology. It is super fun. It's more like paranormal. It has a romance in it, but I wouldn't call it a romance. It is definitely more like YA, but it is really, really good and it's queer as well. I really like it. The next up, I have the Cassidy Blake series by Victoria Schwab. The first one is City of Ghosts. This is a middle grade series that I love. It is so good. And this one just follows a girl and her parents have this reality TV show where they go to haunted places and she can see ghosts. So that's a very interesting dynamic, but I'm definitely going to be continuing on in the series and finishing it because there's only one book left to be caught up. I don't know if it's done, but it might be. And then next up I have American Royals by Catherine McGee. This was such a fun little like romance book about like if America had royalty instead of like the presidents and it was so good and I definitely want to continue on in the series. Then I have the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black. This one I could see myself DNFing further along in the future as well but I did enjoy the first one. I think I gave it four stars and I know a lot of my friends really really love the series so I definitely want to continue on. Then I have The Last Hours by Cassandra Clare. This is one of her ongoing series in the Shadowhunter world. I've only read the first one of the three and I know I own the second one. I don't think I own the third one because I think that one recently came out or like last year maybe. So I don't own the last one but I do own the second one. So I at least want to read the second one and see how it goes and then maybe I'll DNF it. Then I have Curse Breakers by Bridget Kemmerer. The first book is, oh god, what is it called? It's the blue cover, not me blanking out. A Curse So Dark and Lonely is the first book and that is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It is so cute and good, but it is like a YA, but I still really, really liked it and I definitely wanna continue on in the series and I own the second book as well. Next up is the Alchemic Journey series by Shauna McGuire. Before I continue on this series, I definitely want to reread the first one. Right now there's two out, but the third one is coming out later this year. And I believe there's going to be four books in the series, but I really love that series. It's so good. So I have one until I'm caught up. And then I have A Good Girl's Got to Murder by Holly Jackson, which if you were not here back when I first started my channel back in like 2021, this was my brand book. I loved this series so much and I still do, but I'm scared to finish the last book because... I've heard some not great things about the last one, but I just love the rest of the series so much. The first two, like, eat down. It's YA, but I 
can't really remember a time that I stayed up the whole night to read a book but A Good Girl's Guide to Murder I did. I, I was hooked okay. I remember sitting in my bed reading that book especially like at the age that I was. I just don't really remember. I would stay up more like when I was in middle school and read books throughout the night but once I got to high school I kind of fell out of that behavior but I read this one when I was a senior in high school and literally it overtook me until I finished it. It overtook me. The next up I have Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This is a graphic novel series. Everybody knows it. There's a show about it. it. follows two boys. It's gay. We love to see it. I only have one volume left to finish the series so I definitely will be finishing it. Then I have Crescent City by Sarah J Mass. This one actually needs to be highlighted as well because I only have one book left to be caught up in the series. Oh my god there's way more with only one book left than I thought. Like I could finish off a lot of these series this year and that would be amazing. But this one everybody knows it as well. It is such a good series. It's my favorite Sarah J Mass series by far and I love it. It's like an urban fantasy but high fantasy world. It is so fun and I'm really excited to finish it. Hopefully I'll be completing the third book in March I'm hoping and then I have the Bromance Book Club by Lisa K Adams I've read books one two and four so that's kind of random but there's five books in there and so I do want to finish this off because I've read the majority of the books in the series they're just kind of fun palette cleanser romances I really enjoyed the, honestly like the first and the second one I think that they're actually both really good romances and the second one has a little bit more depth and substance to it but number one does as well I would definitely recommend it. Then I have the Brown Sisters Trilogy by Talia Hibbert. I only have one book left in this one. If you don't know, I'm a Talia Hibbert hater. I don't like her writing. Me and her don't agree. I've read some of her other work outside the series as well and I didn't like it. I thought it was really bad. But the first book was okay to me. I just didn't really like the relationship at all. And the second book I gave four stars. I liked it. So I think the third book I'm still going to read and finish off the series. Then I have Loose Ends by Rebecca Witherspoon. These ones are just fun little romance novellas. I really like this series and I only have one book left to finish. It's called Megan. It just came out earlier this year so I'm really excited to finish that one off. Then I have the Morgan Brothers series by Lauren Rowe. The first book in the series was actually on one of my favorites of the year list I think in 2021. So I really want to finish this one a lot because I really just think Lauren Rowe knows how to write a really heartfelt romance. So I'm excited to continue on the series. I just haven't yet. There must have been some copying errors because it also says Lauren Rowe right here but it's supposed to say Wrath Kings. And this is a fantasy romance series by Grace Draven. I really enjoyed the first one. I know the first book is like some of people's all-time favorite fantasy romance. It wasn't for me, but I really liked it. It's Friends to Lovers, which is not my favorite trope, which I think is why it wasn't an absolute fave for me. But I still highly recommend it, and I definitely want to continue on in this series. Then I have the playbook series by Alexa Martin. This is one that I really enjoy. I've read the first two in the series, and I own, I think, three of them. So I definitely want to continue on in it. It is like a good spot sports romance series written by a black author. I really like the series. Then I have The Blood and Ash Years by Jennifer L. Armitrout. I've read three of the five books and I don't know if I want to continue. I've DNF the series. I really really loved the first one a lot and the second one I liked. The third one it kind of fell flat so we'll see but a lot of people don't like the rest of the series so I don't know. People say it's like she's beating a dead horse so I don't know if I'm going to continue on. I have it as DNF for now. I don't think any of y'all in the comments are going to be like, it's worth it because I've never heard anybody say that. But another fantasy romance series is The Kingmaker Chronicles by Amanda Boucher. This one was a really, really good forced proximity um, fantasy romance. I really enjoyed it and I definitely want to continue on in the series. We have a lot of ones that just have one so far. So you guys can see I was on like my fantasy romance, paranormal romance shit because next up is the Black Dagger Brotherhood. This one has 21 books in the series so I don't know when I will ever catch up but I do want to continue on in the series. It's a vampire classic paranormal romance series. If you have not read this you definitely should. It's literally a classic in the genre. So is the Side Changeling series by Lenny Singh and I actually prefer the Side Changeling series over Black Dagger Brotherhood. That's just me. They're both really classic and Side Changeling is more werewolves and Black Dagger Brotherhood is vampires. Side Changeling has 22 books in the series too so I don't know if I'll ever finish them because they're still actively coming out with books. They're still actively coming out with books for both the series but yeah look at the progress bars. They're so sad. Um, next up I have the Alex Stern series by Lee Bardugo. I definitely want to finish this one. I only have one book left, Hellbent. My friend Mayana loves Hellbent. It was like her favorite book of last year. I don't know if I'm going to love it because a lot of people didn't love it, but I still want to see, you know? 
Next up, I have the Cider Shot Mystery Series and the Bonnie and Clyde Series, both by Julie and Lindsay. These are just some cozy mystery series by this author. I've only read the first one in each of them. I definitely want to continue on in the Cider Shot Mystery Series. I really like that one. The Bonnie and Clyde Mysteries, they kind of have like a lot of books in it now, but I think I'll still continue on because I like a cozy mystery every now and again. Then I have Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I have read the first three books and the novella as well. So I actually need to change it to 3.5 because I read the 0.5 as well. But I have four books left in this series and they're like the four biggest books. So I'm like kind of scared, but I do really want to finish this series off and I'm trying to make progress on it this year. So we'll see if I actually do because I say that every single year that I'm going to make progress on this series. I literally started reading this series back in sixth grade. I did a book report on this series in sixth grade. So that's how I know. Um, I really wish I had like something to show for it like I wish I still had it next up I have Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Menescalco I love Carrie okay I know the girls be hating on her but one thing about me me and Carrie locked in but I've only read the first book in the series I've heard mixings about the second book a lot of people like it more than the first book a lot of people don't like it as much as the first book so we'll see but I really do enjoy the series it's kind of like a fantasy paranormal romance series it's pretty good it's more like new adult than her other series so I like it Next up is A Touch of Taboo by Kitty Robert. This one, the first book is Your Dad Will Do. These are really, really just like smutty romances. They're basically erotica, I'm not going to lie. But I don't have erotica on this drop down, I don't think. Um, they're basically erotica. They're really fun and quick. And so I would definitely continue on in this series when I need something just like to pick me up. And then I have Grip by Kennedy Ryan. I really like the series a lot. I love everything that Kennedy Ryan does. It is my least favorite of her series, but I do really like it. I have read 1.5 of these because the only one I haven't read is the second one. So I definitely want to continue on in this series and finish it off because I only have one book left. And I actually own the bind up that has all three in the trilogy. It's technically a trilogy, but the first book is a novella. Then I have the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert. This is a retelling series. They're all retellings of like Disney classic stories. So the first one is a retelling of Aladdin and it was really, really good. So I definitely want to continue on. There are six books now so we'll see but these ones are really smutty as well I don't know if I would call them erotica they kind of are erotica but they do have more romance in them than like the touch of taboo series then I have the Briar U series by L. Kennedy this is actually the spin-off series to her um off-campus series I have not read the off-campus series but I read the first one in this one because my Swoon Sisters book club we used to do it by trope so we would have people vote on a trope and then we pick a book related to that trope and so this one happened to fit the trope which is why we chose it and I loved this book so much I felt so seen and represented and the main character had ADHD and I just really related to her so I really liked this series a lot and I definitely want to continue and see what else L. Kennedy can write then I have Voyeur by Fiona Cole you can see I was really on a kind of romance kick a romance and mystery really but Voyeur by Fiona Cole is kind of a series that all revolves around this strip club it's really really fun I've only read the first book in the series and again there's six books in the series but I do want to continue on because for it being so smutty it actually had like a lot of depth to it which I really really liked then I have the VIP series by Krista Callahan I've only read the second book in the series I haven't read the first one so I want to go back and read the first one but I really like this this is another case of Sue and Sisters where it just fit the trope so this is just a really fun series the first one or the second one actually the one that I read it had to do with a musician and then an agent or like a manager it was really really fun next up is Tito Rosie's Kitchen Mysteries I would definitely want to continue on in this series I love cozy mystery series I think they're just so fun and this one is by an author of color and it's really well written so then I have The Lion and the Mouse by Kenya Wright this series has seven books in it so I marked it as DNF because I loved the first one in this series it is a mafia romance series by a black author which I love but I did not like the second book at all it's a case of girls and paper and fire so I just don't know what to do I don't know what to trust the first book or the second book I just don't know then I have the Green Creek series by TJ Klune. The first one is Wolf Song, which is one of my favorite romances of all time. I definitely want to continue on in the series, but each book follows a different couple, how most romance series does. And I just love Ox and Joe so much. I don't know like if I can follow anybody else in this world, but that book literally tore my heart and stomped on it and shredded it and just, yeah. 
Then I have the Royal Elite series by Rena Kent. I read two of the seven. I love this series. It is a dark romance series. It's a bullying romance series. I remember what I would say to my friends. I want a bullying romance that's bully romance. Like I don't want just a little light teasing. Like I wanted bully romance and this is that. So if you don't like that, don't read this. But I was eating it up back in the day, back in like 2021, 2022. So I definitely want to continue on, see if it's still for me. And if not, I could just DNF it. Then I have the Seaside cafe mystery series by brie baker fun fact brie baker and julianne Lindsay, who was on this list earlier right here um they are actually the same author but i really like this one this is my favorite of her series because it takes place in the outer banks of north carolina which i live in north carolina so like i know what she's talking about like i can envision it so i really like it this is about a woman who owns like an iced tea shop down by the shore and it's really fun i read four of the seven so i've read quite a bit and i own like two more books in the series i think that i haven't read so i i'm just missing one so i'm definitely going to continue on then i have the brutal birthright series by sophie lark i really like this one a lot i've only read one of the six but i really liked it it's not my favorite of her series my, her other series that follows the children of the ones in this is my favorite but i still really like this one a lot and i think it was really fun then i've twisted by anna huang this one i enjoyed the first one but it wasn't my favorite but a lot of people say the series gets better it just gets better and it the first book i liked enough where i definitely want to continue on the series and then i have the mile high club by tl swan I've only read the second book in this one but I loved it. It was also on my favorites of the year for the year that I read it and I absolutely just love this one so much and I definitely want to continue on. You guys can see again romance kick. Then I have the fallen men series by Jana Darling. I don't know if I'm going to continue on in this series. I haven't marked it as DNF but I don't know. I read just the second book um, which is everybody's favorite and I did not like it. I think age gap just isn't for me anymore but not all of her books are age gap so that's why i want to continue on in the series and see if i like it but i don't know okay i don't know then i have the supernatural investigations by bb alston the first book is amari and the night brothers i really want to continue on in this one i actually need to highlight this one as well because there's only one more until i'm caught up in this series but this one is like a fun middle grade about a girl who's looking for her brother and applies to the supernatural investigation kind of place and she has to go through a tournament to try and get in it's really fun then i have lore olympus by rachel smith i really like this one it's a graphic novel series the art style is not my favorite but it's very bright and vibrant which i like and it is a retelling of hades and persephone with greek gods and i just like the way that she tells the greek gods in this story i read three of the five volumes that are currently out there's more out on webtoons i believe but of the published volumes i read three of the five then I've gone to see The Rubber Man by Christopher Triana. This one also needs to be highlighted as well. I was totally slacking. Gone to see The Rubber Man was such a good extreme horror book and I definitely want to finish the series but I just haven't been able to read extreme horror because of what happened with my friend Haley back last year in August and I just haven't been able to touch extreme horror but I still want to finish the series. It'll probably be like the, one of the last extreme horror that I read because I'm kind of done with the genre. Then I have the off-campus series. Oh, I lied. I did read one book in the off-campus series. Look, it was forgettable, I guess. Um, but I do want to read both the series just so I can have the context because it's like a classic romance series. The girlies love it. They're hockey romance, college hockey romance, which I love sports romances. I love college romances. So then I have the Raven Hood series by Kate Stewart. This is another tentative possible DNF. I don't have marked DNF for now, but I didn't really enjoy the first book. I thought it was pretty boring, but there was a twist at the end of the first book that made me interested. So I kind of continue on the series and see what it's about. And I've heard the second book is really phenomenal. So I may continue on. Then I have the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey. I did not mean to do that. The Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey. And I read three of the five. These are short little thriller romance novellas. They're like, they have thrillerness in them and they are romance. I would say they're equal parts, honestly. And I read three of the five. They're little novellas, so I'm definitely going to finish the series. Then I have the Still House Lake series by Rachel Kane. I love Still House Lake. I think that's such a phenomenal thriller about a woman who discovered her husband was a serial killer and is now like kind of being um chased or followed by people who believe she had a part in his killings but then also by him and his kind of lackeys i really enjoyed still house lake and it has six books in the series but i know there's kind of like other things that this woman does like the main character in the series it's not just about her the whole series but i definitely want to continue on i've heard it's really good and these ones are on ku so they're really good 
Then I have Hoops by Kennedy Ryan, the Hoop series by her. It is a trilogy. I've only read the first one, which is really heavy on domestic abuse. I don't think the other ones are as heavy, but I'm really excited to continue on. I love Kennedy Ryan's work, and it's just so good. Then I have the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter. I've only read the first book in this series, but I definitely want to continue on. I want to read all of Karen Slaughter's backlist one day, so I have to read this one and her other series and yeah there's a lot of books but this is the one that I've started and I loved it so so much and I definitely want to continue on and read more next up I have Wild by Kay Tucker this was one of my favorites in the year that I read it it was so good the simple wild the first one and I definitely want to continue on the series I think we follow the same couple which is not my fave but I, I want to see what's going on with the rest of the series because I just love the first one so much. Then I have Zodiac Academy and I think I'm DNFing this series. I haven't marked as DNF. There's eight books in the series. I read the first one and I didn't really like it. So I don't think I'm going to continue on. But I, I could be persuaded to pick it up. Then I have The Hunger Duet by Evita Weiss. The first one is called Feed and then that one was a novella and then they came out with a full length book. So I definitely want to continue on. It was really well written and very just like smutty, good monster romance. I don't even like monster romances but I like this one. Then I have Gods of Hunger by RM Virtues. This one is another Hades and Persephone retelling. This one is modern day in a casino. It was really, really good, the first book, so I definitely want to continue on in the series. Then I have The Cat and Mouse Duet by H.D. Carlton. This one is a tentative DNF as well. I've actually read one and a half because I read Satan's Affair, which I love, and then I read the first one, Haunting Adeline. Didn't really love it, but I might still continue on with Haunting Adeline just to see how it wraps up. There's only one book left, so I might as well. Then I have the Molly Southbourne series by Tate Thompson. I really liked the first one. The second one was okay. So I think I'm going to just finish it up. They're short little novellas. So I could just say like I finished the series. I know that sounds terrible because we shouldn't be reading books just to finish series. But I enjoyed the first one a lot. So I definitely want to see how this story wraps up. Then I have The Wright Brothers by Christina C. Jones. Um, I read the first one. It is such a good college romance but with older characters i read the first one it's a trilogy i definitely want to continue on and finish this one up then i have the x hex by aaron sterling this one is a really fun just kind of um romance series that's paranormal that's like more like rom-com ish but it's still paranormal and i read the first one in this one there's two currently out so i definitely plan on finishing it probably around the spooky season then I have Sheets, which is a graphic novel series, and this one follows a little ghost in a laundromat, and he, like, appears as a sheet, you know, because, yeah. Um, there's three in this one, and I read the first one. It was really good, so I definitely want to continue on. Then I have Losers by Harley LaRue. I read the little novella called The Dare, which I loved. I haven't loved Harley LaRue's work, but I loved The Dare. And then she's come out with two books after that one. And I don't know what they follow, but I'm assuming they're in the same world, same kind of characters. And I definitely want to continue on and read a full length book in that world to see if I really like it. Then I have the Magical Bakery Mystery Series by Bailey Cates. This one is a witchy cozy mystery series. I'll probably continue this one around spooky season, probably read like one or two every year. And there's 10 in the series. I've only read the first one, but I definitely want to continue on. Then I have The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Oseman. And this one I thought was fun. I don't know if I'm going to make it through the whole series though, but I definitely really liked it. But I know people love the fourth book that just came out this year, so maybe I'll grow to love it too. But I definitely really liked it, and I'll see if I want to finish it. Then I have Killing Stalking, and we're starting to get into like the more recent series. But Killing Stalking, I love. This is a manoir, and it is very crazy please look up trigger warnings for killing stalking because that series is crazy i've only read the first one but i definitely need to continue on like there's no question no doubt in my head about it i need to then i have uh rachel crawl by megan golden i'm caught up on this series currently there's two books out and this one is a fun series that follows a podcaster it's a thriller series it's pretty good i definitely enjoyed the first one more than the second one but the second one is good as well then I have Love Light by B.K. Boris and this is a kind of like romance Christmas tree farm series. I don't know if the other ones in the series are Christmassy. I don't think they are. I know I know own another one in the series so I definitely want to continue on. I believe the fourth one's coming out later this year but I own another one in the series so I definitely want to read it. Then I have Year of Blood by Cameron Rubik. The first one is Disco Death Trap and that one was like a fun little slasher. The next one I think is about golf and so like I'm kind of like I don't want to read that but it's like a mini golf course, I think. So I I'll probably just try it to see if it's good. But I really like Cameron Robeek's writing. So I'll probably continue on. 
Then I have the St. Louis Cyclone series by Alexandria House. This is a romance series. I've loved some of Alexandria House's work. I've loved it. Like the Them Boy series, I love that series. And her St. Louis, what is it called? The St. Louis Cyrus series. I love that series. But this one is not my favorite. I really didn't like the first book. It had like a lot of cheating in it and I just couldn't redeem the character. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll probably continue on anyways. And I read another series from Alexandria House I didn't like either. So then I have the arrangement by Kirsten Modulin. There is three books in this series. I heard the best summer cash grabs but the first one had me in a chokehold. So I'm probably going to continue on anyways. Um, if you're looking for a fun popcorn thriller that's going to have twists and turns that have you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, the arrangement. Then I have Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. Again, another series of 19 books. So I don't know when I'm ever going to finish these or if I'm ever going to be in the mood to read 19 alien smut books, but I have them anyways. Um, I definitely want to continue on the series though. Like, I don't know if I'll make it to 19, but I'll definitely continue on. Then I have the Slaughter books by Sergio Gomez. The first one is Camp Slaughter. This one actually needs to be highlighted as well because there's only one book left in the series. I really liked Camp Slaughter. I thought it was really fun. And then the other one I think is Halloween Slaughter. So I'll definitely read that one around Halloween. Then I have In Death by J.D. Robb. Another one. 59 books. There's no way. No, 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 no way in my life I'm going to read all the In Death series by J.D. Robb. There's just no way. Um, the first book was really good though. So I definitely want to continue on. And like it's definitely a classic kind of thriller suspense series. So I want to like continue on. Look at the progress bar though. Crazy. Then I have the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. There's 10 books out currently and I actually want to do a reading vlog where I read all the Wayward Children's books so we will see if I do that. Then I have Garlic by Brie Paulson. There's only two out in this series so far. I don't know if there's going to be any more so I might put completed actually because um, I don't know if there's going to be any more but this is such a cute little graphic novel series that's middle grade and I just love it. Then I have Love Struck by Mimi Grace and I love this series. I love it so much. So let me highlight this one as well. I love this one. It is so fun. They are just like really cute black romances. They're just so good. Then I have A Vine Mess by Tessa Bailey. There's only one left in the series. I really didn't enjoy the first book that much but I have enjoyed a lot of Tessa Bailey's work in the past so maybe it was just a fluke and I just want to see how the rest of the series is. There's only one left. Then I have Island Bites by N.G. Pelter and this one was a really cute romance as well and I really like the representation in it so I definitely want to continue. Then I have the Deanna Madden series by A.R. Torrey. The first one is The Girl in 6E. I really really like that book a lot so I definitely want to continue on in the series and see what, uh, what else Deanna is going to get up to. Then I have the Salacious Player Club series by Sarah Kate. This one is a fun series that all kind of revolves around a it's not a sex club but it's kind of a sex club. I know Voyeur is very similar and like they both are around clubs but I would say Voyeur is more of like emotional and Salacious Player Club is more fun and the first one did have age gap in it but I still enjoyed it so I think this author just knows how to write and I definitely want to continue on. Then I have the Legends and Latte series by Travis Baldier. This one I really love Legends of Lattes. It's such a good cozy fantasy series and I actually bought the prequel and so I need to read that one as well um, to finish off the series. And then I have Immortals After Dark, another one, 18 books. Um, but this one is a good kind of paranormal romance series that has a lot of different paranormal creatures in it so I definitely really liked that. Then I have the St. Louis Sire series by Alexandria House. I love this series. It's a hockey series, but it's black and I just ate it up. Okay, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I don't know if there's going to be any more books in this series, but there has to be or else I'm going to cry. Then I have Binti by Nita Okorafor. I don't know if I'm going to continue on this series. It's marked enough. I feel like I'd have to reread the first one physically and I don't own it physically because in the audiobook I was just lost. So I definitely need to reread the first one if I'm going to continue on. Let me know if you think it's worth it. That I Meant to Be, and this one's by multiple authors, and I said DNF because I just read one by Jasmine Guillory, and I really, really liked it, but I'm not really interested in the other authors in this series, so I don't think I'm going to continue. And then lastly, I had the Magnolia Park series by Jess Hastings. I read the first book, and I definitely want to continue on. I just bought Daisy Hates, the first Daisy Hates, so I definitely want to continue on in the series. And now we can scroll over to the side and see how many series I only have one left in now. 26 series almost done 26 series almost done i could get this down from 88 to what 62 yeah, yeah yeah i definitely need to finish some series this year catch up and just play catch up there's no reason i should have 26 series that i could basically finish with one book
there's no way there's no reason for that but those are the series that i'm currently like in the middle of slash caught up on i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you want me to do a five star audit for y'all i would really love to do it if you made it to the end what emoji should we do today just do the skull emoji if you made it to the end leave the little skull emoji down below and i'll see y'all on my next one bye everybody